This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney Investigations, everybody! We are still on Turnabout of Ways. We're finally at the middle, middle part, part two of eight, basically. <laughs> of eight? <laughs> this case is so long. I, maybe it's shorter than I remember. I hope so. I, I remember this being very long. It's just kind of boring. Like, would you agree that this thus far has been kind of boring for a last case? For a last case, yes, but that's because the stakes are pretty low. Right. In previous games, the stakes have been like, holy crap, Maya might die! Holy, holy cra crap, Edgeworth. Maya might die! Holy cow, Edgeworth, Edgeworth is arrested. Like, arrested. Whoa. Holy cow, the, ju the justice system is being overhauled completely. Completely, and then it's like, oh, I guess uh, this girl's being convicted of murder. Not anymore. Not anymore, even. It's like, oh, Larry, maybe. March 4th. No, Larry got Is that like a well. Sonic Spring? Doing? It's like a, I don't know. For the last time, we did not order, order a, a giant, giant trampoline. trampoline. March 14th, 9.21 p.m., open air stage. Oh, it's a stage. I've left the Damask 2 case investigation to Franziska and returned to Babal. I suppose my first order of business should be to look into Babal's statue. Mr. Edgeworth! It's okay, what's the situation? Oh, it's great! Investigating's so much fun! In other words, they've made absolutely no progress. W we weren't goofing off! Honest, sir! We've been investigating our hearts out! Very well, then. Would you care to give me an update on your investigation? Um... Oh, we've had a really fun time, sir! I knew it. Zero progress. In any case, Detective Gumshoe... Yeah. Yes, sir! You have permission to enter the Alabastian Embassy, is that correct? Yup! As a local detective, I'm helping out with investigations on both sides, sir! Good. In that case, I can leave these pieces of evidence with you. <laughs> they belong to the lady under the Pink Princess's mask. The Pink Princess? What kind of lady was playing her, sir? The kind that was also playing the role of the Pink Badger yesterday. Ugh! Oh, understood, sir. If I happen to run into her, I'll give them back to her. And if I don't, then I guess I'll unload them somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't seem all that enthused to go find her, but I can't blame him. Evidence that has lost their value given to Detective Gumshoe. Now then, I don't believe I'll be needing this anymore either. What? Are you really going to throw that autograph away? Yes, because the Steel Samurai was a fake. Steel Samurai's autograph scrunched into a ball and exposed <laughs> Edgeworth is very cutthroat. Wait, what? What do you mean by fake? Now then, I believe it's time for a little housekeeping. Unnecessary evidence has been removed. Remaining evidence has been rearranged. Oh, Kay's our partner again. So, Yeah? How is the investigation going into the Bobbley's Secretariat's office, Kay? Even though we found a few treasures, they've all been pretty much burnt to a crisp. Treasure's a terrible thing to waste. Anyway, is there anything else I should know about? Um, oh yeah, that's right. You know what I found in the office? A wooden bear carving. It's so cute! Can I have it? Oh, uh, can I? No, of course you can't. By the sound of things, it appears that there has been no progress made in the investigation. What'd you expect? Hmm, a ladder. Actually, that's a step ladder. They're the exact same thing. No way! From their structure up, they're totally different. But of course, from a thief's perspective, the best kind of ladder is a rope ladder. A step ladder is much too heavy to carry around, after all. And from a prosecutor's perspective, any type of ladder is guilty of being dangerous during an earthquake. Oh. Step ladders are different, because they have yeah. the actual part on top that you can stand on. Mm -hmm. Bags full of cement powder are stacked up here. I suppose they're for renovation. Yeah, because I don't smell a drop of gold here. Or any other treasure for that matter. Okay, the only scent you should detect in a place like this is the smell of sweat. Uh, hey Mr. Edgeworth, that was a pretty good play on words there. Nah, gummy! Don't randomly jump into one of our dialogues like that! Were you eavesdropping on us, Detective Gumshoe? No, it's not like that, sir. It would appear that the stage is also scheduled to be renovated. You know, I would love to perform on a stage like this. Something like the greatest thief's show. 
That was really slow text. I should think it would be a bad idea for a thief to show their face to the world. Mr. Edgeworth! You look like you're enjoying yourself, Detective. Well, I don't have much else that I enjoy as much as a good investigation, sir. So, what did you find out? Ah, well... <laughs> I take it he has found nothing of any particular use, as usual. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, I got something really interesting from Ambassador Polano. Oh, and what is this something interesting? This, sir... <laughs> Whoa, that's so pretty! <coughs> I'm so jealous! That's a real treasure there! Why does the flame burn green, Detective? So apparently, have you ever seen the like, show Redwall? Apparently, Swagar threw the stuff in the fire to make it burn green. <laughs> I forgot about that! Wow! <laughs> it happens in the theme song, sir. I forgot about that. Uh, apparently, if you burn the special wood crystal oil that they only make in Babal, it burns this green color, sir. Interesting. So it's a special property of the oil. I suppose this is a ploy to force people to visit the balls should the oil run out. Hey Gummy, what about these silhouettes? They stuck some cutouts on the outside of the lantern so it project the images. Oh? Silhouettes, huh? They are rather pretty, aren't they? Wait, what am I doing? I was supposed to be asking for an update on the investigation. Hey, what's wrong, sir? There's something I want to investigate for me- you to investigate for me. Do you think you can do that much? Uh-huh. You got it, sir. Hey, that's not fair. Why does Gummy get to do all the fun stuff? Ah, uh, well, that's because I'm Mr. Edgeworth's partner. Uh, I can't believe you took advantage of the confusion and stole my role as assistant! I expect the two of you to get along and work together like professionals on this. Silhouette Lantern Data jotted down. Okay. That's cool. Talk to Inspector Pol not Inspector. Inspector. There's a sign here warning passersby to take precautions He's around this renovation area. <laughs> <laughs> They're really going all out, huh? There's construction going on everywhere. I believe Ambassador Paleno said it was to attract more tourists and visitors. But what can they do with the new stuff they're building? Hey, what do you think they should do, Mr. Edgeworth? How about transforming it into a courthouse? Hey, be serious! But I was being serious. Now I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> this bush looks like the perfect place to hide some sort of treasure, you know? Ah, oh, but there's no treasure inside those things. Oh, too bad. But we do have a lot of treasures back in Babal. Sounds great! I'll be sure to pay you guys a visit sometime for a five finger discount! <laughs> five finger discount? <laughs> sure, sure, we welcome you anytime. Are you sure you really want to invite a thief into your country with open arms? As uh -huh. long as they go to Walt Disney World the ball, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at these scaffolds makes me want to climb them! I recommend that you do not try. There was a fire burning here until not too long ago. Yeah, but I think enough time has passed, so it should be alright. Thief Child says, if there's a height to be scaled, then scale it you must! Starting from Thief Child, would you care to explain what you just said? Is that like Lanezy? Yeah. They're having a real time of it. They're having a real time of it cleaning up after the fire. Hmm. I suppose we should stay out of here and investigate the stage some more then. All right, we'll talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> right in his face. Ah, so you're back now, are you, Mr. Edgeworth? You must be tired. Here, with these, you can eat wherever you'd like. And these are discount tickets for our cafeteria. They open tomorrow at ten in the morning. I appreciate the concern, however, these coupons do nothing for me right now. He's, he's like, Hungry Howie's giving me all the coupons. Yes, you got so many Hungry Howie's coupons! Oh my gosh. <laughs> They're like, we know you're, like, <laughs> an adult. We know you like pizza. Like, I like we know you live pizza. alone. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> this open-air stage, what function does it serve exactly? Well, normally we use it for a variety of events. It's all to attract the extra bit of attention to Babal. I heard that tonight over in the Alabastian Rose Garden, Ambassador Alba was to give a speech. And you know what? Manny told me that I really should give a speech too. Mr. Cochin told you that? Yes, he did. Which is why I thought I should give a speech of my own. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Because of the fire the Yadagrasu started. Supposedly. You still think Larry did Larry it. definitely set the building on fire. <laughs> Accidentally. Would be, he would be like, oh man, that smoke was so bad. And then like, he would... 
like his shirt would catch on fire and be like, oh no, okay, stop, drop, and roll. And then would start rolling on the roof and then it would catch us off. <laughs> Only the roof would catch fire then, though. But then it could like transfer. It doesn't transfer down, oh. it goes up. Exactly. Maybe he like was stuck in the chimney and then started rolling around. <laughs> sure. Ambassador Palaino, I'd like to ask you a little more about the Primadu statues. Oh, I see! Well, let me ask you this. Did you know that Alabast and Babal used to be the one country called Kodopia? Yes, I know that much about your history. We spent the entire fourth case on that. Mm -hmm. Well, the Primadu statue belonged to the founders of Kodopia. At least, that's how the story goes. It was bequeathed unto the skin of Kodopia as a symbol of the country's wealth. So it was meant as a symbol of sovereignty and the right to rule, I take it? Yes, that's right! Which is why both countries are so adamant about their claim. We hold the real statue, therefore we hold the right to rule, is the reason. It's pretty petty when you think about it, though, I suppose. But if Alabast and Babal were to re-establish relations, shouldn't that put an end to the squabbling over the statue? I have no reason to believe so. The primitive statue is even more important now as a key to diplomacy. I wonder if Ambassador Peleno knows about what has happened to the very important key to diplomacy. Perhaps I should try showing him this key and see what he has to say about it. I love the fancy music. I like his look when he's looking like a little concerned, not when he's like. <laughs> <laughs> he looks his more natural. Hair. He's got the care, man. He's got the hair. It's like super long. Um, you know that saying, uh, "You don't wear plaid, plaid wears you." <laughs> That's, uh, I've never heard of that. You've before, never actually, heard that? No. That was one of my friend's moms. Oh. She was like, "You don't wear plaid. Plaid wears you." I'm like, "Yeah, that. I'm that, never wearing plaid." <laughs> I, I, I'm not wearing. I can't pull off plaid. Maybe. 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 You'd have to like style your hair. I'm not styling not, exactly, my hair. Exactly. Ambassador Paleno, there's just one thing I'd like to ask you about. Yes. Oh, and don't worry. You can ask me more than just one thing. How about two or three? In exchange, I expect you'll be coming to Babal. Yes. Th thank you, but just Stop the one us. thing is all I require. Manny Cochin, I'd like to ask you about this man who is your secretary. Sh sure, I'll tell you what I know. Thank you for your cooperation, Ambassador. He was... well... If I, had to, if I had to put it in one word, he was an able man. Five Cyclops. <laughs> if there was ever anything I needed as an Ambassador, he was able to get it for me. To think that a man like that... Had a hand in a smuggling ring right under my nose, going completely unnoticed. Actually, I suppose he was... Because he was an able man, I was unable to detect his dirty deal. I love how Edgeworth was just smiling the whole time, like, I know what this <laughs> man is telling mm, me. Sounds like Mr. Cochin had a very sharp mind. Recently, Manny had been really busy. Since I became the Babalese representative at the Country Unification Council... The Dry State Area Unification, unification Day, why? <laughs> he's been working tirelessly to cover my work for me. I'm sorry, but what is this Country Unification Council? Oh, well, you see, had tonight's events proceeded without a hitch, our two countries were to reunify and become one again. But I guess with how things turned out, that dream won't be realized anytime soon. You can do it tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> we had two murders here. The statues got swapped. No worries! I mean, well, they don't know that the statues got swapped. Maybe. Also, mm, yeah. hmm, I suppose not. Manny nope. Cochin was never. Talk. Manny Cochin was never out with us, right? With us? No. I, like, the only he, time we kind of interacted with him was when he's like, "Hey, Callisto, want to meet? Oh, <laughs> hey, okay. Grover, want to dance?" Uh, yeah. So he could have been switching the statues while the show was going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, isn't that about our great embassy? Ah, how do you like our pamphlets? I feel indifferent about them, to be honest. I want to make a paper airplane. I'm just them. using this as evidence. Oh, that's too bad. In that case, I guess we'll have to try harder to make the more charming ones. I just had a flash of inspiration. We should make all of our pamphlets into coupon books. What is with this guy's obsession with coupons? He's like the person who, you know how there's like some people's houses you go to and it's like a stack of coupons on the dining room table? <laughs> this is actually, guy. this guy actually hosts Extreme Coupons. That's why. <laughs> oh, maybe I forgot about extreme couponing where it's like. Actually, that okay. show got taken down. With how many coupons you get, you can like save like thirty dollars or whatever. That's not like, extreme like the couponing. Shop, like the shopping channel works. Extreme like, couponing is like you buy like hundreds of paintings at the store and walk away with them owing you money. <laughs> yeah. His expectations of what a coupon can do is just a tad hyperinflated. <laughs> oh dear. 
if people were to find out that a murder occurred at our embassy. The number of tourists would plummet, as would our revenues, and it'd be a disaster. What are we going to do? He really does seem worried. Perhaps I should refrain from bringing this up. Oh, wait, I don't think we had that before. No, that's fine. He's sweating so. No um, big deal. Bobbly's ink. Bobbly's ink consists mostly of wheat crystal oil. Ha-ha! <laughs> when lit, the oil in the ink burns a bright yellow green. It makes for a great science experiment. Here, give it a try with this. Yes, well, I understand your enthusiasm, but the amount you gave me earlier is enough. I see. That's too bad. I would have taken a second one. I would have taken a second one. In that case, why don't you have a few more of these coupons? I've got plenty. No. I, I have plenty of those too. Where is he conjuring those from? <laughs> They're like down his shirt, in his sleeves, in his pant pockets, because guys <laughs> actually have pant pockets. <laughs> you see this? This doesn't exist. There's no- What the heck? There's no pocket. That's, what the heck? That looks like a pocket, but there's no- There's no pocket. Part it's of just... me wants to just make a company that makes women's jeans. That you would make bank. I would, but I don't know how to start a company. Start with me. I got entrepreneurship. No, I don't know how the bureaucracy you have to oh, go through in order to you, do it. You look this stuff up on the internet. I can't believe that Bobbly's ink was being used in such an evil scheme. And if people were to find out, that would really tarnish the global image of Babano. If people were to find out that women's don't actually have pockets, then they count. Women's would... don't actually have pockets. Sorry, I was gonna say women's jeans, and then I. Everyone knows this. But these really don't. Ah, uh, this is really bad. Really, really bad. Ooh, Babal's in a bind now. Is it just me, or does his words not match his facial expression? They don't. They never do. Like every man. That's oh. evil in this game. <laughs> Um, Samurai Dogs. Ambassador Palano, if you could please take a look at this for me. The Perimidu statue sitting in Alabast right now actually belongs to Babal. So it would appear. I received a call from Miss Von Karma about this earlier. Oh. Then you will understand why I wish to inspect Babal's Perimidu statue immediately. Because the statue currently in your country's possession... Yes, well, I've already inspected it myself. And it is definitely our last statue. I know because it's the real statue. Then you're saying that Babal's was a replica? I'm embarrassed to say it's true, even though I knew that someday it would be exposed. I received my orders from the leaders of Babal, and I was to negotiate with Ambassador Alba at this event. I was to negotiate with him and fix the results of the evaluation tonight. To say that we could not determine which statue was the real one. Why are you telling me this? Well, because you already figured it out. Our statue is just a hollow gold shell. Even if Babal were to lose face, the reunification of the country is what's important. So, their statue, Babal's statue, which is in Alabastian property, is hollow. Yeah. And was hollow during the murder? So, Because how would what, that work if the guy it's struck his what, head on What we're believing is that... Uh... The, the original Alabas statue, the real one, was used to kill uh, Casino. And then they swapped, and then they them. swapped it later. So Manny Cochin's just, like, insane. That's what we're confirming. Well, he's, he's a terrible person Sheena. already. Was she not there already? She caught him immediately. I don't, oh, think, she's been, she, I don't think she's been to Alabas. She's only but, been but to the But here's the thing. Okay, but this is this is a quintessential... I've been watching Murder, She Wrote. This is a quintessential thing of, whoa, this person comes running in super quickly, considering that there's a fire and they just discovered the murder weapon. Where'd they come from? They were waiting oh. for it. So it could be that um, Sheena and Manny Cochin were like... In cahoots. In cahoots, because hmm. Sheena is actually Callisto Yu, who is in cahoots with Manny Cochin, and... Yeah. She hated Manny Cochin. Oh yeah, she did, but like, they both... <laughs> People can hate each other and still work together. That's what Tom and Jerry taught us. I know what I episodes. know and I want what I want. I'm right in thinking that, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making a mistake, right? If you don't know yourself, then I won't pretend to know either. I never thought that by being betrayed by my own secretary, the real symbol of wealth would be given to me. Isn't it simply ironic? I gotta say, Ambassador Polano, like, good on him for just being like, oh yeah, ours is fake. To us. Like, yeah. He's being very cooperative. He is being very cooperative because we can't really blurt all of this stuff anyway. That's true. We're not with, like, um, <laughs> what's her face from Harry Potter with the, the quill? Rita Skeeter. Rita Skeeter. We're not like, Harry Potter, age 12, beat the dragon. It's like, I'm actually 14. <laughs> I just realized that Rita Skeeter, recently that Rita Skeeter is also the villain from Chicken Run. 
No, I haven't seen Chicken Run. That's a dark movie. Holy cow. Hey, where are you going? Are you heading back to Alabast? Yes, but before I do, I suppose I should give you a summary of what's happened. Oh, I see. So there's been a murder in both countries using an object from the other country? That's the gist of it. The ball is just as strict as Alabast in their inspection of the people and things that enter their country. Meaning that somehow both murder weapons were smuggled into two countries. That's the only logical conclusion that can be drawn. Perhaps the key to the weapon smuggling is the person who traversed both countries. You mean the fake Yadagorasu? In one way or another, the Yadagorasu is connected. Of this, I am sure. Now then, where was the Yadagorasu first spotted? I believe it was the Rose Garden on the Alabastian side of the Embassy. The garden is just on the other side of this boundary. It's where Ambassador Alba was to give a speech tonight. At least, that's wh where I heard the Yadagorasu would be. In that case, I believe it's vital that I investigate the Rose Garden post-haste. Wait, before you go, take a look at this, Mr. Edgeworth! Is that a guitar pick? What is it? My guess is that it's the guitar pick. Oh, it is. I picked it up just now over there. Do you think it'll be of any use? There's a little water on it, but how did the water get on it? It doesn't look like there's anything it could be get wet from around here. I was thinking, they have concerts here in this open air stage from time to time, right? All right, I'll find its owner later. Pick data added to the organizer. Oh yeah, there's one more thing. Mr. Edgeworth, would you be willing to hold on to this? What is this? It's misused perfume. It's the bottle that woman left behind and I found seven years ago. I thought that one day it'd be of some use in tracking her down. So I kept it safe all this time. Thank you. I'd be honored to hold on to it for you. Misuse perfume data added. Just like sneak up on Sheena and be like. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be like a Christoph Gavin theme, like owning the same nail polish does not a murderer make. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, I love. That was a really good case. That was a good case. I liked him as a character. Yeah, Christoph. Just was a like great the development of him as well. And the fact where it's like, oh, I forgot about this hero. I think I'll be returning to the investigation in Alabas now, but. I know, I know. I'll go back to the ball and do some more investigating there. March 14th, 9.58 p.m., Rose Garden. So there's leaves. Ugh. I think this I'm is guessing Fran that's Francisca. I think so. Let me see your back, Miles Edgeworth. Yep. How are things in Babal? Although, I can't really say I expect much from Scruffy and that girl. The investigation into Manny Cochin's death hasn't really progressed any. However, the investigation into the Adagarasu has. One thing I've been trying to figure out, um, the water is very low, if that's like a fountain. Mm hmm You know? You like, know? Like, um, really low. Uh-huh. Ah, yes. The Yadagorasu. Even now I find it hard to believe. A person who can freely traverse between the two countries at will? Preposterous! Well, that's what I came here to investigate. I heard that this is where the witnesses claim to have seen the Yadagorasu. That's correct. Wait, now the water's higher! In the flashback, yeah. Oh, it's a flashback, okay. Ambassador Alba was to give a speech tonight here in Alabas. And that's when the Yadagorasu appeared. The shadow of the mysterious thief appeared and just as suddenly it vanished. After that, there was fire at the Babalese embassy and that the Yadagorasu started. What if the Yadagorasu was the wolf man? <laughs> Long Lane? Long Lane. That'd be interesting. Oh, that's, that would be interesting. I vow that not a single feather from the Yadagorasu shall escape my diligence. Begin investigation! Let's talk to her. Yes. Tonight, in this very rose garden, the Alabastian ambassador, Quercus. Quercus, I think? Quercus? Quercus! I don't Master know, Uguay. Sounds, <laughs> it sounds really weird, that's what. Yeah. Quercus Alba was to give a commemorative speech. A very key commemorative speech at that. And including Agent Lang, the security detail was very tight. But as if to mock our efforts, the Yadagorasu appears. Then just like that, the thief vanishes and starts a fire at the Bobbley's embassy! Interesting. And are you sure that it was the Yadagorasu who appeared here? Of course. But to have it slipped by such tight security, and then disappear into thin air, 
We will need to conduct a very thorough investigation of this area. Yes, my thoughts exactly. What if they share the same water system and water pipes? And like, um... It's like an underground were... sewer or something? Yeah! Like, oh. think like Arnold from <laughs> Magic School Bus. Was that in the book? Probably. Where, where it's like all of the waterworks the connects between buildings. And oh. I mean, they were really small. But they were like swimming to the other buildings. And then there's the seventh grader who's like, ah! <laughs> Do you remember that? Is this the one where like Liz is locked in the bathroom? Yes! Oh, okay, yeah, I remember <laughs> yes! that. Yes! Where they explore like how reservoirs work. And then like Arnold's in the bathroom too, because he's in the girl's bathroom oh, yeah, for, the, he's, for he's... the science project. And then the, the girl opens the door and it slides. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. In order to find out the truth behind what happened here, I should start by gathering as much information as I can. Anyway. Oh, oh, hey, look who it is. With an eye patch. No, with two with sunglasses. sunglasses. Have you finished checking out all the bystanders? Yes, sir. And we found 14 counts of pickpocketing, 60 counts of illegal parking, and one person ran a light, sir. Don't tell me you didn't find out anything related to the case. Sir, not a single thing, sir. That many pickpockets in one night? Is this like a Aladdin convention or something? I was about to say, was Aladdin just like, one jump out of the ch- <laughs> One jump out of the 16 throat. counts of pickpocketing all from one person. <laughs> <laughs> one jump <laughs> Aladdin's the uh, Yadagarasu. <laughs> that would be perfect! <laughs> well, for now, let's just get those other lawbreakers down to the precinct. He looks like he's trying to hail a cab. He's like, taxi. <laughs> Agent Lane. Well, if it isn't Mr. Prosecutor. I would just like to thank you for your assistance earlier. Make no mistake, it's not like I was trying to help you with what I did. After I left, did you receive word from Ambassador Alba? We're to wrap up our bodyguard assignment at the end of today. Oddly enough, we received word from HQ to return home on an urgent matter. Heh, <laughs> as if I could be so easily called away from this case after I've come this far. I swear that I'll find the truth and drag it out screaming into the light. You're with me on that, right, Mr. Prosecutor? Sure. You were working as Ambassador Alba's bodyguard at the time. So naturally, you witnessed when the Yadagarasu appeared, correct? Yeah, I saw the thief all right, with my own two eyes. Uh-huh. The Yadagarasu was always there, lurking in the shadows. How? He's dressed in, like, giant feathers and, like, a weird, like, well, maybe, native Indi like, Indian, American Indian hat. Is it American Indian hat? It looks is it, like, like it from Shadow the shadows. The Oh, maybe it's Shadow the Hedgehog. Shadow the Hedgehog. Oh, I didn't put on a Shadow oh, the Hedgehog oh, hat. You know what it also looks like? It looks like all of the loft wings from Skyward Sword a little bit. Oh, yeah, a little bit. I'm trying to think of, like, bird people. Oh, from Wind Waker, the, the postman. The Rito. The Rito. It's the Rito. It, it's Aladdin wearing a Rito hat. <laughs> bunch of Who can man. fly a bunch of <laughs> But uh, when the spotlights were turned on for Ambassador Alba's speech, a shadow appeared. That's when cries of, It's the Yadagarasu! Rain out. <laughs> they could just, like, that was the project guy. the shadow. You they know, could, like, when yeah. you put a projection up? Like, they probably were gonna have a projection, like, of the National Bobbley's Anthem. I don't know. Uh, I pledge to perform! In Alabast? <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, they tried, maybe they wrote a new <laughs> anthem for when the countries are reunited. Cause no, but here's the thing. Kodopia. You know they're gonna rename it something else. Because whenever countries come back together, they always name it a new why thing it, just to make it super confusing why is it the for first everyone who maps the world. I, why is it the first anthem I think of? Is it even the American national anthem? But, oh, monsters universe. <laughs> because it's very, it's popular. Anyway. The but next they, second, the spotlight went out. <laughs> my idea is they, like, we're gonna project the words of the new anthem, because no one knows it, oh. onto the screen, and then instead, like, they just put, like, a bird in front of the screen. They were like, it's the Anagarasu! Like, it's, it's Forty Williams! It's Forty Williams! <laughs> it's Forty Williams! <laughs> By the time we got the area lit again, the deaf thief had vanished. When we investigated afterwards, we found that the reason the lights went out was because someone had unplugged the extension plug for all the outdoor electronics. It was Aladdin. Whether it was someone doing it on purpose, or simply a guest who had tripped over it, we don't know. But one thing is for certain, the Yadagarasu was here. So you're saying that basically all you saw was the thief silhouette? Yes. Objection. If all you saw was a shadow, then it's entirely possible that the shadow belonged to someone else. Ha! <laughs> Good thinking, sis. You just might be right. If it weren't for the fact that there was no one else with that same shape. 
Not among the staff nor the audience members. My men have already done a thorough check of everyone, so I know I'm right. Someone else's shadow. That sounds like a plausible hypothesis. Well, goodbye. Oh, I thought he... Never mind. I think that's Let's where we're going to end go. it today. Okay. Because we're right at the half hour mark. So okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. We'll finish exploring the Rose Garden, and we might find out more about uh, Aladdin's silhouette. <laughs> yeah, Aladdin in the Rito. I want. I would dress. love to see fan art of him just going around all by like, "What?" No, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Until we meet again, my friends. Have a great day, and God bless. You know, can we just jump in and ruin the samurai show and try and fight? He's the, he was the villain that they fought. <laughs>